Hey, I'm Dan Thomas. Welcome to the Newbie Woodworker. I built this cool tool a couple of months ago, and I'm really surprised at the number of uses I found for it. I think you'll be surprised too. Some people call this a flat chisel plane, but I'm just calling it a chisel plane. Since the bottom is flat, you can set it on the face of your stock to clean up the surface. This is harder to do with the standard chisel because the handle gets in the way. But the chisel plane's handle is on top of the blade, so it stays out of the way, which makes it easier to remove things, like glue squeeze out, or excess wood filler, or even labels. Again, you could do this with a chisel, but it's hard to keep it flat. It's easy with a chisel plane. You can also use it like a card scraper by using the back of the blade. I keep finding new uses for it, and I find myself reaching for it more and more often. And it's a snap to remove the blade if you need to clean or sharpen it. So if this looks interesting to you, stick around and I'll show you how I built it. So the concept is pretty simple. Take the blade for a hand plane and attach it to a block of wood using magnets. And find a way to keep the blade from sliding off as you use it. So this is a prototype I built. I used a blade from an old hand plane and about six inches of two by four. These are quarter inch nuts that are supposed to keep the blade from moving side to side. This heel is supposed to keep the blade from sliding off this way. And these are eight millimeter neodymium magnets that are supposed to keep the blade attached. Well, it turns out the nuts didn't do a very good job. This slides off way too easily. The magnets weren't strong enough and the heel should have been made out of harder wood because it started to round over. So here's the final version that fixes all those problems. It's made out of maple, including the heel and the piece for the blade slot. Apparently I didn't use enough glue on the end of the heel and a piece broke off, but it still works fine. I bought this blade from Amazon for less than $15. There's links in the description below. The bottom's a little rougher than I wanted, but I used some car wax on it and now it's fine. I started out by laminating a couple of pieces of maple together for the handle. Oh yeah, see this band-aid? And this one? Plane blades are frickin' sharp. Don't have your hand anywhere near where you're pushing the chisel plane, or one slip will have you wishing you'd listen to me. You gotta be kidding me. Are you cringing? Good, remember that feeling. And the one on my thumb? Yeah, be careful checking to see if the blade's sharp. I swear I just barely grazed the blade, and I thought I was going away from the edge, but it still managed to bite me. And yes, it was sharp. Once the glue dried, I cleaned up the edges, and then I wanted to cut a thin strip to use for the heel and blade slot. The blade's about 5 64ths of an inch thick, so I cut the strip to about a 16th of an inch. I recommend using a feather board when cutting something this thin. When I was getting ready to cut the strip for the heel, I realized the stock is so thin, it slides into the chamfer on my crosscut sled, so I used some scrap wood as a backer. Next up is cutting the piece for the blade slot. I did this using a crosscut sled because the piece was so thin, I was afraid it would slide under the fence. But I used a gripper to hold it in place, so I knew I was being pretty safe. I don't have video of this, not really, but I traced the slot so I knew where to glue the slot piece. I glued on the heel and held it in place for a few seconds so it would stay in place when I clamped it. Make sure you clean up any glue in the front of the heel so there's a nice square surface for the blade to press against. Then I glued on the slot piece, again being careful to clean up the glue. Once the glue had dried, I did a final little bit of cleanup. The neodymium magnets I used said they were half inch but they're actually 12 millimeters, which is a little smaller. I wanted the holes to be the same size, so I bought a 12 millimeter Forstner bit for $10 from Amazon. I drilled the holes deep enough for the magnets to be just below the surface of the handle. I glued them in using Gorilla Epoxy Glue. I know some people have good luck with CA glue and activator, but that just never seems to work for me. I put tape over the magnets, then used a couple of pieces of scrap wood against the tape and clamped everything down. I like using painter's tape to mix the epoxy glue because cleanup is a breeze. Once the glue dried, I cleaned off the tops of the magnets using a chisel. Obviously, you want the beveled edge of the blade facing up. The magnets hold pretty well, although I might consider adding two more. We'll see. 
I contoured the handle for better grip, creating a sandstorm in the process, but I've got the garage door open and I'm wearing this mask. I highly recommend this mask, or one like it, with replaceable submicron filters. And make sure you keep the filters clean. I just used my vacuum to clean them. As with everything else, there's links in the description below. You can see me wearing the mask here. I used a roundover bit for the edges. I finished by doing some hand sanding, and even added a layer of spray lacquer just to make the handle a little more tacky in my hand. It works great, and like I said, you'll keep finding uses for it you never dreamed of. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks. Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click show more, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks.